It's news time. Information is power. Be current. The news headline. What I tell bad it each time I beat them. The news in full. Popular cleric Sheikh Ahmad Gumi has explained things he tells bandits each time he meets them. Gumi has always given his perspective on what he believes should be done to stop banditry. He often says they should be granted amnesty. Many have found this position and style unacceptable. But speaking on journalist Hangout on TBC on Tuesday, November 30, 2021, he said he never condoned criminality, adding that he was not sympathetic to them. He said, My stand is very clear. Insecurity, especially as it is affecting the northern region, shouldn't be taken if there is good leadership or management. We are talking about two people who used to live together now fighting. If you can reconcile them, it will be over. I always ask them, the bandits, why are they kidnapping and raping? I give them enough talk and time to talk. I preach to them, and that's what they are doing is bad. And you find them very receptive, contrary to what people think. He added that some of the bandits were saying that was why I say it was a socio-economic problem. According to them, cutting telecom services doesn't make sense as it works in the favor of invaders. He said people could no more call for help when being attacked, he added, I preach to them to leave crime. Immediately we preach to them, some of them who smoke hemp, stop the act. So their leaders ban art drugs. They are trying to change, but there are still some becoming Asha, as military action is had on them. During the last Ramadan, I sent five Fulani speaking preachers to a group, and they listened to them. I am not sympathetic with them. I don't control, uh, condone criminality. I want criminality to stop. That is why I went there in the first place. I found out that they are human beings, so we should explore the window of reaching out to them when uh, it is possible. Whether he and his family members listen or not, I will continue to counsel him. I will continue to counsel him as I have done in the past. What we do need is a most peaceful and secured society. But Kanu's family, in a swift reaction, lampooned the former governor, accusing him of unnecessarily advertising his visit to Kanu, probably for political gains. Kanu's younger brother, Prince Emmanuel. Kanu, who spoke for the family, demanded explanations uh, from the governor what he meant by Kanu's insane amount of people rooting for his release. The family cautioned the Senate. Senator Ojikalu want to achieve by those by those confusing and disparaging remarks. Is he saying that the millions of followers of Inaldekanu who feel disenchanted by the protracted and provocative marginalization and injustice perpetrated against Biafrans by the Nigerian authority are insane? Who is Kalu working for? Must he advertise his visits to our brother? If he thinks he has any solution to prefer, can't be work from behind the scene, must he make political capital of every issue? We are highly disappointed by his incoherent utterances. He must understand that our brother is not being prosecuted because he stole or committed a crime. His only crime is that it's a crime for asking for the freedom of people, of the oppressed people of Biafra. Oji, Uzo, Kalu and his types are the reason the agitation for self-determination by our people is unending. How can he be trusted by the people? We have not forgotten his role in 2017 when our brother was in Kuje prison. What is his mission? Is it for or against Namdekanu? By his utterances, it is clear that he is, no lo- he is no solution but part of the problems of our people. He shouldn't forget that history will judge him for all his actions and inactions. In case Kanu doesn't know, Real Igbo leaders are working behind the scene to bring about solution to the problem of our people. They don't make noise over it, he said. And this is the news that Mazi in Amdekanu uh, had actually, you know, uh, been visited by Senator Ojikalu, who actually made some remarks that got vexed to the family of Mazi in Amdekanu.
who said that is react uh, the comments of Oji Uzo Kalu about uh, the followers of uh, Mazin Abekano to be insane amount of people, saying that the utterances of Oji Uzo Kalu was uh, was clearly no solutions but part of the problems of the people, saying that he needs not to forget that history we judge him for all his actions and inactions, especially that they have not forgotten his rule in 2017 when their brother was in Kujiri prison, saying that what is his mission, that they need to know clearly if he is for or against Inandikano, reiterating that Kanu was actually not arrested for uh, a crime or for stealing. All he was arrested for was because he was fighting for the oppressed people of Biafra. The movement for the actualization of the sovereign state of Biafra, Maso, has celebrated the release of 19 of their members who have been detained since 2006. The celebration coincided with 10 years anniversary of the death of Igbo leader Dim Chukwemeka Odumegu Ojuko, Eze Igbo Buruburu. In a statement, Maso leader Uchena Madu described Dim Chukwemeka Odumegu Ojuku as the greatest Igbo man that has ever lived. The statement reads in part, Dim Chukwemeka still remains the greatest Nigerian man that ever lived. He laid an unforgettable foundation for enhancement and restoration of true Africanism and total liberation of black man from Western domination. Ojuku was the president of Biafra and the general of the People's Army. He stood for justice, total freedom, and equity for us all. We are celebrating a living legend, a symbol of egoism, the lion that is fear conquers the enemy of his people. Today, we have gathered to reflect, refresh, and revive the consciousness of Ujukuism in Igbo land. As we celebrate the legendary of Dim Chukwemeka Odumegu Ojuku Eze Igbo Buruburu, Masob celebrates the release of our members from Oka and Onicha prisons after spending more than 15 years in detention. They are Mrs. Onyekachi Oji, Emmanuel Oji, Uche Idikiago, Michael Okezi, Uchena, Nicholas, Peter Igbokwe, Ikechuku Agbara, Okudiri Basi, Chima Aso, Chinweke Irundi, Sabastain Amadi, Kasmia Odokara, Ujemba, Anyawu, Enekalu, Ondubuisi Okam, Ikechuku Chikwem, Chukuma Kalu, Chidebiri Chikwem, and Mbanda Buchi Asika. They have all journeyed through the valley of Nigeria's injustice and inhumanity against the people of Biafra. They were falsely accused and prosecuted by the Nigerian police, abandoned by the judges, Nigerian police, abandoned by the Federal High Court, and subjected to indescribable tortures, psychological and traumatic pains by the Nigerian prison officials for the past 15 years. These great Biafrans survived and endured the hopeless dungeon until Senators Iyenaya, Habaribe, and Christian Yahoo intervened on July 2021, after our meeting with them at Enugu, Maso thanked the most eloquent and fearless Senator Iyenaya Abaribe that contacted the Eastern Bar during their 2021 annual convention in Enugu over the unjust plight of our members. We also thank Jiki Gazama, San, and team of lawyers from Eastern Bar for their unrelenting efforts in securing, securing the release of our members. Maso appealed for more intervention an extension of hand for the release of Mazi in Abdekanu and other or justly retained because of Biafra. Thanks for listening.